Okay, Shalom. Uh, we're the Hebrew Israelites back again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And before we begin this lesson, we want to give all honor, praise, and glory unto Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Hashem Rakah Kodash. Okay, we want to give a double honors to the elders and the apostles out there, chiefly of Great Millstone, where us three learnt this truth from. We recognize them as being the true prophets, the real prophets of these end times. And, uh, you know, they have the answers through the Holy Scriptures to all the questions concerning the times that we're living in. Okay, we want to give a shalom to you Akwaf out there that are in order, being submissive to your husbands and keeping the laws and being a virtuous woman to the best of your ability. Okay, shalom to you. We don't claim to be a part of Christianity. We don't claim to be a part of any religion. We are the Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. And we are the ones that keep the laws, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability. Okay, which is what we must do in these end times to be spared from what's coming. Now this lesson today, <clears throat> um, we're just going to speak on the times that we're living in. We're going to flow in the spirit on various topics concerning the uh the the jab. okay we're just going to call it you know we're going to be very careful with our words because uh the algorithms on youtube are set against brothers like ourselves that understand the truth of what's going on in this earth and us that try to expose the wickedness and the corruption of this earth okay and uh you know, we're being highly censored and we have to choose our words carefully, otherwise this video won't even make it to YouTube, okay? And we've had many lessons taken down in the past and we've had many strikes on our channels and we've had accounts terminated. And this is happening quite frequently among them that teach the truth. You know, you Christians out there, it doesn't happen amongst you guys a lot because you don't speak the things that are offensive to the wickedness of this world okay you don't speak things that are against the status quo or against the agenda of these elites these so-called elites yeah so this is uh going into what my brother was just talking about how um our channels are being striked uh taking down you know other brothers out there that are diligently you know doing the work of the lord uh spent years um, bringing out knowledge and edification videos just being wiped out um, this is all leading into prophecy um, and this is the book of Amos chapter 8 verse 11 and it reads behold the days come saith the Lord Yahweh uh, that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but of hearing the words of Yahweh so that's the times that we're coming into you know the censorship on on YouTube is uh, making sure that it's it's difficult, more difficult for us to, to push these videos out to edify the sheep, to edify the flock. You know that's why we have to choose our words carefully, because if we say the wrong thing, you know we don't even get a warning. It's quite literally a strike, boom, video video gone, uh, three strikes and you're out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's the way that. This devil's got the, the system made up. He doesn't want you to have the uh, the truth or the knowledge and wisdom, you know. And all praises be to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai that, you know, we came into this thing before that time. So we were able to hear the words of uh, the elders and apostles of Great Millstone um, to, who, who taught us the way, you know. Mm -hmm. i got a precept on what you just said because you brought out the Amos 8 and 11 and the fact that we're experiencing... And approach fastly approaching the famine of the word you know the elect is going to be sealed at that point and there's no need for us to teach anymore okay this is when uh, our job is done as fishers okay and then shortly after that comes hunting season but this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 and I'm gonna read verse 26 and it says and I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth and thou shalt be dumb and thou shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. Okay, and that's talking about the nation of Israel. Because that's who we're meant to reprove, our people, the children of Israel. It's not for everyone. 
But it says the Lord will make our tongue cleave to the roof of our mouth. And this ain't talking about literally, because otherwise, like, we're all just going to be standing there in a group one day and literally st stuck, our tongue stuck to the roof of our mouth. That's hideous, man. Okay? And, and this is our... we got to break this down thoroughly to you people out there, because some of you people out there are simple, man, and you be thinking that it literally means that your tongue is going to cleave to the roof of your mouth. It's not literal, man. You've got to think of it in a spiritual sense. It just means that the Lord is going to make us to where we're a mute and we ain't going to be out here reproving our people anymore. Yeah. Because they are a rebellious house. They walk in pride. And the ones that are sealed are going to be sealed. And once that's done, the Lord has no need for us to teach anymore because no one else is going to make it. It's not like the Spirit getting taken off of you, but it's like the Spirit moving in another direction. Come you know? Come man. All for the... All for the work of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. That's right. All for the will of the Heavenly Father, you know? That's right, man. This is uh, <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 55 and verse 6. It says, Seek ye how while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Okay? While he may be found. You lot need to understand the magnitude of that scripture. It says, while he may be found. Because he's not always going to be found okay there's going to come a time where you're not going to have the liberty to learn the way of salvation okay the truth the way and the life you're not going to be able to have access to it man nine and amos uh, eight and eleven as my brother brought out here first that first scripture he brought out that's a very important scripture for you to understand because you're not always going to have a chance to repent man we're living in a grace period right now it works the same way as if you was uh, owe a credit card company some money they yeah. give you a grace period man okay and you need to use that grace period to find that money now this is our grace period to find our repentance to find our uh, salvation the scriptures say seek your own salvation with fear and trembling this is in uh, Philippians 2 and 12 Fear and trembling means with a seriousness. We have to seek our own salvation, man. And 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 as you say, that money, yeah, the, 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 this word is like money. Mm -hmm. The interpretation thereof is like big money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because what did the, yeah, what did the scripture say? Store up your riches in in Zion. That's right. You know what I mean? Where it can't be tainted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm because. -hmm. Everything, everything that is established on, in this world is temporary. Is temporary. temporary and tainted stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Of course, why? You have to conform, <clears throat> and you have to conform to the will of Satan. You know what I mean? Which is the the spiritual demon Satan, and he has his physical counterpart, which is Esau mm -hmm. upon the, the earth. children of the devil, man, the seed know? of the serpent, man. So you you're con conforming is what you're going to be doing. You know, if you want to continue in this, the new normal, what what else do they say? What other garbage do they say? The new the, normal. The great reset. The great reset. All these things. If you want to keep continuing in that, you're going to have to conform. Mm. And that conforming will take you miles away from, from uh, your holy power. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So whether you take that max or you... Or you uh, you know, the RFID, whatever. You're going to have to do something in order to continue, you know, into that new normal. We look for another country to come, you know. Mm. We look for um, a, a holy place in, in the end of all of this. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. According to the Most High. And, and, and what's going to happen because we look for that? heavy persecution but you've got to be able to take that the book of revelations chapter 2 verse 10 fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer when you can't get the things that you're used to getting when you haven't got the right uh, you know the right things in order to get food and whatnot you know you're not allowed anywhere because you're not maxed out of your eyeballs. You know? The Most High will provide. You always got to remember how He provided for the children of Israel in the wilderness. 
you know, quail, manna from heaven, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, trust in the Most High with your whole heart, you know, and He will provide in these last days. So what if you have to face death? Really and truly, we're so soft in this modern times. Every man should be ready to face death, really. That's it, man. You know? Mm -hmm. Believe in the Most High. Let Him guide your way, your steps. This is a... Uh, yeah, Revelation 2 and 10, I'll start again from the beginning. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Now the devil ain't going to come upon the earth with a pitchfork, going, ha, 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 you know, mm -hmm. get into prison. The counterparts of the spiritual demon, Satan, are going to throw you into prison. Why? Because they will make the protocol of the day what you got to do, what you got to say, how you got to behave in order to get through. They're going to they gonna control the narrative. But there's a remnant of, of the men of Yahweh, of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, who will be saved out of that, you know? So it says, uh, shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death. That's very important. Be thou faithful unto death. You might be defamed in the presence of men. You know, maybe the station you held before, you will be debased from it. You've got to enjoy these things. Mm -hmm. You know? Because you're really not doing this for the eyes of men. You're doing this... <coughs> in order to be acceptable in the eyes of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, you know? Um, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And what's that life? Everlasting life in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right, man. That's right. In the beginning of that scripture, you said uh, about... Um, what was it about fear? What was it? Fear none of the uh, fear none of those things, things yeah. which thou shalt suffer. That's right, man. Yeah. And I got a precept on that, man, because that's we need to be in that warrior spirit, man. You know, a lot of you that understand Bible, whether it be through what you learn in Christianity or whether it be through the truth, you know, in these end times, um, you know, a lot of you understand that. There's coming a time when things are going to get real. Hey, man, we've been preparing our whole life for this, you know. So well, when this time comes, which is fastly approaching, we can see it on the horizon now. You know, you need to hold on to that warrior spirit, man. You know, uh, don't fear and, and, and choke up in the last minute when things get real. Because the thing is, what we do in these end times is going to be documented and echo throughout eternity. It's going to represent who you are in the eternal realm, man. Okay, in the eternal world that's coming. It's going to represent your eternal rank, whether you was one of the foolish or whether you stood strong and stiffly for the name of the Lord. Okay. Now, this is uh, the book of uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, and verse 7. It says, For the Most High hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So these are the spirits that a true man of the Lord possesses. A spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. You're not going to be walking around all bugged out, talking to yourself like some junkie on the street. You yeah. never find a man of the Lord all bugged out of his mind like that. The men of the Lord, whether or not they look crazy to you lot out there, because our knowledge is so deep, we are the most sound-minded people on this planet, okay? And you'll come to realize that the more you understand this truth. Correct. Because, because like how you say, a sound mind. Mm -hmm. uh, even Solomon said, give me, any, you know, give me any sickness, but not the sickness of the heart. So not, uh, not, not no brain, brain disease. Yeah. And really and truly, these people all got like some sort of brain disease. Yeah, man. You know, inflicted by the powers that be, but still, you know, that, that, that willingness to believe, that willingness to put your faith in there, mm. now you're a bug out. That's right. You man. know, because you never had the guiding lines to follow. 
Yeah. You never wanted it. And then maybe it wasn't even revealed unto you, you know? Mm -hmm. So now your lot is to just be a bug of thinking like your second and your third is going to get you through and then uh, following it as far as you can, you know? Mm -hmm. Going the whole way <laughs> with, <laughs> with, uh, with juicing yourself up, you know? That's it. I got a quick precept on that too, man, because this is, uh, uh, I'm going to just read it. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 15. It says, yeah. the simple believeth every, every word, word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. That's right. A prudent man is a wise man, a man that looks ahead and thinks ahead, man. That's right. Okay. That's a man. A visionary. That's right, man. And, uh, you know, that's another word for a yeah. prudent man. But hey, a prudent man is one that doesn't believe every word that Esau tells them like simp man he looks well into things he does his research he studies yeah you know he, yeah. he or she you know they, they study a person that studies and looks well into their going to their goings man exactly okay? that's a prudent person that's what spirit was supposed okay. to be in a sound mind and what makes your goings well what what brings your goings to to a, a, a um an acceptable in acceptable way the law statutes and commandments are the most high because he who keeps the commandment shall feel no evil thing you know what I mean so so you getting hit with with all these man that's an evil thing right there and we're gonna feel the after effects of that mm -hmm. you know what I mean but the commandments tell us not to put nothing within our within our skin so we gonna we gonna stick to that because why? It is better to obey the Most High than it is to obey man. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. Um, <clears throat> this is a book of Second Ezra's chapter 2, and I want to quickly read from 42 onward because it relates to what you said earlier about uh, being crowned. And it says, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them was a young man, high of stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Now this taller person that set crowns on these people's head, that's Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. And the ones he's setting crowns upon their heads are the ones that got the victory over this system, man. Over this beast system. Okay. Over the mark and the beast verse 44 says so i asked the angel and said sir what are these he answered and said unto me these be they which have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of the most high now are they crowned and receive palms okay mm -hmm. receive the victory man okay because you know the name is very important so if you stand stiffly in the end times that we're living in now, for the name of the Lord, man, okay, and for what what his name represents, the vibration that his name puts forth out in the earth, man, you know, then you know, you 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 be the ones that one of the ones that get the victory, man, you know, and you'll be crowned if you get the victory. You know, if you stand stiffly for the name of the Lord in these end times, man, this is what it's all about. You know, if you thought or was called, if you thought of yourself low all your life, you've been depressed or you thought you wish you could have done more for this world in this life that you were given or people called you a loser and made you feel like you was uh, less than nothing, then, you know, this is the time to be something, man. Stand up for the Lord and have that, have whatever sins or however you felt about yourself in the past be wiped away. And then, you know, this, this uh, standing for the Lord so stiffly in these end times, that will be your legacy in the kingdom, man. You ain't going to be remembered as that guy that didn't do nothing with his life. You know, all his life didn't know what the hell to do with his life and wasted it. You ain't going to be remembered as that. You're going to be remembered as that man that woke up in the end and stood stiffly for the name of the Lord and received the crown by the Lord himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth, man. Okay. Hey, what a beautiful blessing, man. You know, this is the 
might the thought process you lot need to be in in these end times, man, because we're about to go through it. That's and right. if you ain't got the faith which you can get through these scriptures, then you ain't going to make it, man. You need faith. You know, knowledge and wisdom builds our faith. And knowledge and wisdom of these scriptures is also described as the stability of the times that we're living in. You know, because, hey, what we're about to go through is a very strong spiritual battle, man. And, you know, you're going to be warring with your flesh. You might not have eaten for 10 days and then someone presents you with a bacon sandwich. You do, As much as you're against eating pork, man, I guarantee you'd be tempted to eat that damn sandwich. I don't care who you are. But, hey, you know, this is what, there's these scriptures, this is what gives us the stability for us to be able to handle the temptations that are coming in these end times, the knowledge and wisdom of these scriptures, man. So, you know, this is why we do what we do week in, week out. It's a very helpful and very serious thing that we're involved in right here, although it seems like foolishness to you people out there. And we're coming into the time of Jacob's trouble as well. That's right. You know, if if we are not in it, you know what I mean. This this is the time. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be easy like that anymore. It's gonna be get progressively harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Like as we were saying before, food in the <coughs> supermarkets will get progressively lower and lower. You know, and 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 all your amenities will start to fade away before your eyes including your civil rights and all of that stuff which you hold dear to yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. This is the book of Jeremiah 30 and start, start at 6. It says, Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. You know, that's the pains of what's going to come about upon, upon men and women, you know? Wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. And who shall be saved out of it? The men that the Most High deems worthy, the elect. The ones who have stood true to this word, you know? For it shall come to pass in that day, said Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off his neck, and I will burst his bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, you know? In that day, uh, uh, the sons of Jacob will no longer be a spoil mm -hmm. unto the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but they shall serve the Lord their power, and David their king, king whom I shall ra raise up unto them. Mm. But they will serve the Lord, their power. So that's what we're trying to do here, man. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get right. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what we're trying to do, and we suggest that them among you who have the Spirit upon you, try as well. Come, on. Come back to our power. You know? Come on. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord. There's a lot of things right now that can make you really fear. What's going to happen to my job? Mm. How do I keep my job without the max, <coughs> without maxing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How do I keep my income? How do I feed my children? How do I do this? How do I do that? Fears, fears that have come upon you. Mm -hmm. You know, place there by a vicious devil, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be dismayed, you know, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. The Most High will save us from afar. Those chariots are for us. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. So there's the salvation right there. You know, fear not the man who can kill the flesh, but fear him that can kill the spirit also. The Most High is to be feared. He is to be praised. He is to be glorified within this earth. Because the times you're going to take the max, you're going to 
do all the stuff to conform, you're really praising another deity, which is Satan, Shatan. You understand? Yeah. Blessed be the most high power of Israel. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Sheh. Okay. I got a precept to, to go off the back of what you just uh, brought out yeah. about, um, you know, not worrying about things. Um, and this is the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 6, verse 25. Uh, and it reads, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body uh, than raiment? Verse 26 says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? So the scriptures uh, are saying here that when you follow the ways of, of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know, the Lord's got you in, in uh, a basic manner of speaking. The Lord's got you. You know, don't worry about what's going to happen in your life. Don't worry about, you know, your job. Don't worry about how you're going to pay your bills. Just focus on the Lord. Like laser focus in. We're in them times now where we have to focus on, on the Lord. You know, we're going to be tried as gold is tried in the fire. You know, we're going to be tempted. You know, we're going to be put in situations where your, your faith is going to be tested. You know, and you've just got to focus on the Lord and know that the Lord is going to uh, protect you. You know, he's going to feed you. He's going to give you drink. You know what I mean? Just laser focus in on the Lord because this devil is coming uh, with great wrath because he knows that he has quite a short time left. Okay. I got a precept. Okay. Um, this time that we're approaching, where the devil is coming down on us having great wrath, this is going to bring about what the Bible calls Jacob's trouble, as my brother here just brought out. Okay, and I got a precept on what he just brought out here in Daniel, the book of Daniel, verse uh, chapter twelve. I'm gonna start at verse one. It says, "And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people." Okay, so all of you truthers out there that believe in your white Jesus and you trust in him to save you from what's coming on and you say he's going to save us humans from these evil people, these elites and this and that, man. He ain't here to save you, okay? The Lord ain't going to save you, okay? Because that's your people that are destroying this earth. This is your people's rulership, man. And look what they're doing with it. Now it's time for our people's rulership, and it's something that a lot of you can't get your head around, man. Okay, the nation of Edom had their chance to rule. Second Ezra six and nine says Esau is the end of the world. This man is the one that's going to destroy the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, which is also known as the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so when we're ruling the twelve tribes of Israel, that's going to be the kingdom of heaven, right? So let me let me start again. This is Daniel 12 and 1. At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay? So the ones that are written in the book are from the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? This is something that you need to understand in order to understand what the Bible is really about because a lot of you have a twisted imagination or a strong delusion upon you where you think that the Lord is just going to come out hand flowers and say, well done, everybody. Yeah. Your, your trouble is over. There, there, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. That's not how it's going to go. That's not how it's going down, man. Uh, verse 2, Daniel 12 and 2 says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. 
Now the righteousness of the Most High might not be the same as the righteousness of Christianity, okay? Two different things, man. The righteousness of Christianity says, okay, you can be a one of the alphabet boys and we will happily marry you because the Lord says to just love. And this is this is your you Christians, man. You ain't written in the book of life, man. Most of you Christians out there. Okay? Because you're teaching death. And it says, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So the ones that turn the people to true righteousness and tell us and tell the truth of the Bible, that worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, okay, those are the ones that are going to shine as the stars forever and ever, man. Okay, because they're the ones that are pleasing the Lord and doing what the Lord actually requires okay not not just singing and clapping and dancing their way into the kingdom okay we're at war in case you haven't noticed you know if you've been living under a rock all this time hey man the most hide can't use a mind like that it's too late in the game for you to just be now waking up and 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 oh oh my god actually we're, we're we have evil forces that are trying to take over the world man come on where you been what planet you been living on if you're only just now starting to wake up to what's going on in this earth, man. These are as like as in the days of Noah. This is what we live in. Mm -hmm. Never trust our enemy. Because mm. as as iron rusted, so does that is wickedness. You know what I mean? You you want to trust mad scientists, you know, to do to do uh something good with your life. Physicians of no value. Yeah. Men that are more interested in population control than keeping you alive. Mm. These are the people you're actually going to put your trust in. Eugenics. Eugenesis. And you've got a lot of people that claim to be woke, right? And they're, they seem to be on the side of righteousness, trying to expose the corruption, expose this, expose that. Which is good, but they're still steadily saying, supporting Trump, man. They're saying, well, if Trump was in office... He was trying to resist them, da da da. He was trying to go against them. Man, you don't understand how lost and asleep you are if that's what you think, man. What's really getting under my skin is this woke bullshit. Are you woke? Trump Nation. Listen, I don't support Biden. I sure as fuck don't support Trump. Two heads, same fucking snake, and I've said that from the beginning. But don't sit on here and tell me you're fucking woke if you're a Trump supporter, or a Biden supporter for that matter. Because you couldn't be more fucking asleep. You think he's a fucking patriot? He's out for your best interest? You got your fucking mind. <sighs> you're not only fucking asleep, you're comatose. If you guys can't see fucking reality for what it is, then there ain't no hope for you. Keep scrolling. You think he's fucking come back through time to save the fucking day? You think he gives a fuck about you? No, remember who fucking old. Then you want to talk about these death. Guess who pushed them fucking warp speed, huh? Mm, yeah, so he's a 30 third degree Freemason. You think he's going to go against his brothers and sisters? Or his brothers? You think he's going to go against his Freemason brothers on the agenda? Fuck no. He's just the biggest actor in this fucking movie, that's all. <laughs> you guys are too fucking sleep to figure that out. I'm not woke, I'm awake. I see shit for what it really is. The real awake people are the ones that see all the bullshit. And see through all the lies and the fucking scams. You know, because Trump, Biden, it don't matter who the hell the devil you picked. They're both on the same team, man. Okay, it's all part of the same beast system. And until you get your head around that, you are not awake. You are asleep, okay? Yeah, this is the book of Genesis chapter 6 and 5. And Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. Mm -hmm. So we're living in these days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That's right. the, the, so what did it say? Their thoughts were evil continually. Mm -hmm. And this is the thoughts that do you in, especially you of the seed of Jacob. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, precept mm -hmm. off of the back of that as well. Um, yeah, so like we're, we're entering into those times where you've got people that are 
sort of against each other now. Like my brother brought out, you know, you've got these these two devils, uh, Biden and, and and Trump. I mean, they they're all part of the same circus. But what they they've sowed in the earth is is evil, wickedness, you know, uh, separation. And like in the times of Noah, like all the same stuff was going on. And uh, Yahushua even said in in the in the book of Luke, uh, chapter twelve, verse fifty one. It says, suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing a lot of divisions. You got your your jabs versus your anti jabs, you got your um, Democrats versus your Republicans, you got your uh, so called blacks versus so called whites, you got all all this division that's happening in the earth is prophecy. It's prophesied to happen. You know, all this stuff is is what's supposed to happen before the, the you know the coming of our Lord, you know? When he cracks that sky, it's it's, it's a wrap for these for these devils especially. Yeah. You know, and that, that's the times that we're coming into. Yeah. A time of, of, of great trouble, division, you know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what's what's happening, confusion, great confusion. But the men of the Lord that uh, stick to these scriptures you know, the, the scriptures are, are the stability of our times, mm -hmm. you know, knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And where do you get the wisdom? Out of these scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's right. I've got a quick preset. Isaiah 55 and verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Okay, your thoughts are very powerful, man. Let the unrighteous man forsake his thoughts because you know there are, his thoughts are wicked continually man yes you know so there is there is a there is repentance for because we're in a grace period still which you lot need to take advantage of a wicked uh, a, a wicked man can be turned righteous man he can be forgiven during this time but a he, he probably won't so let me read that one more time it says this is isaiah 55 and 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him and to our our power for he will abundantly pardon okay it says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways your ways saith Yahweh. for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts man Okay, so seek to be heavenly minded, man. Seek to, you know, have a heavenly mindset to where you're, you know, thinking righteous thoughts, man. Not evil thoughts. Not, oh, you know, that, that short is bad. I, I want that. I'm going to try and take that. Da, 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 da. You know, which is the average thought of your average man. Someone's wife. That's Someone's right. wife, yeah. The average thought of you wicked jakes out there today, man. You know, why don't you be that one that's, different that holy set apart from that crowd from the masses and you think righteous thoughts man you think what can i do to further expose wickedness and corruption in this world and and magnify the name of the lord you know because that's what we're doing we're trying to do everything we can to show people that the ways of the lord are, is the right way and that's that's what a righteous righteous thoughts conjure up man yeah you know like what we're gonna do, what, what we're gonna do our next lesson on, you know, planning how we're gonna further edify people, you know, what's a hot topic in the world right now? What's a lot of questions that people are asking us and how can we edify them and, and answer them collectively? And know? the ability for that, the actual ability for that is only unlocked in, in these last days mm. by our power, you know? That's we right. Would, um, I'm gonna say in Jeremiah. Are oh, you done? No, yeah, I'm done. Okay, and I'll say in Jer Jeremiah, and it says uh, Jeremiah thirty and twenty four, and it says the fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it, and until he have performed the intent of his heart. In the latter days, which is our days, mm -hmm. ye shall consider it, mm -hmm. and then just jump into Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1 <laughs> he answered me then and said <laughs> oh you, you had that <laughs> right right and said measure thou the time diligently in itself 
And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, so that's the prophecies coming to pass, which it, which it is now in the latter days, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time. So now we're seeing the prophecies coming to pass and our ability to interpret them. That hasn't always been around. Mm -mm. In the latter days that has been given unto us. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. uh, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And you can see his visit in it right now, man. Yeah. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, if you watched our uh, a few of our latest lessons, you would have seen we spoke a lot on uproars of the people and, and prophecies coming to pass. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spoke spake of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning. What have we read? We've read the account of Noah in the book of Genesis. And now we're reading along the same lines as that <coughs> in the books of Ezra and Jeremiah. And you can continue right throughout the word, you know? Yeah, because if you look at like places uh, such as Greece, such as Turkey, they're on fire. Alaska just had a, a massive earthquake. Um, you've got earthquakes off the coast of Japan, you know, all these uh, earthquakes are happening in diverse places, uproars of the people, you've got your food riots in, you know, uh, in South Africa, you've got um, people rioting in France, in the UK, in America, everywhere, it's uproars of the people, these are the, the uh, scriptures coming to life, That's right. you know, That's right. it's, it's speaking to you. Live and direct. And, and, and verse 5 says, For like all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Come. That's why we say it's the end of the earth, or the, the end of, of this society. Of this society, kingdom. yeah. Even the generation is called Generation Z. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and what, does, what did it say back in Jeremiah? In the latter days, ye shall consider it. So mm -hmm. the latter days, the end days. So now we see that the end is manifest. Mm -hmm. And in Daniel, the 12th chapter as well, it'll tell you, uh, no, none of the wicked shall understand. So when you say the end uh, that is manifest, it's manifest unto the elect, mm -hmm. or the men that the Most High has placed in order to get this vis the, the, these visions. And really they are visions, even though we don't see clouds in front of us and stuff like that, but we see clearly within the scriptures, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that, that is a vision of the Most High, to show you, mm -hmm. you know? i got a quick precept. This is Habakkuk 2 and 3. It says, uh, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Right. So the vision is for an appointed time. The vision of these prophecies, man. The understanding of these scriptures. Okay? Because the prophets of old were once known as seers. They were, the, they were once called the seers. Okay? But either way, the seers and the prophets are the same thing. So to see the prophecies, you have... Uh, vision you know that's right for the vision is for an appointed time the prophecies are for an appointed time the understanding of these prophecies are for an appointed time and it says but at the end it shall speak and now we are living at the end man the end is the end is manifest yes yes so so that that scripture after scripture telling you that at the end that veil will be taken away you will be able to see uh, you know, well, uh, and, and not everybody, and just to show that it's not everybody, this is the book of Daniel chapter 12, and I'll start from verse, I'll uh, start from 8. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed 
Till the time of the end. Can. You see? Till the time of the end. And the words are not sealed anymore because it says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. None of them. But the wise shall understand. And who are the wise and prudent? Those who take, uh, who who cleave to the the words of the Most High, uh -huh. His law, statutes, and commandments. <coughs> you know, the sheep that hear His voice. You know, yeah, the ones <coughs> of the nation of Israel, man. Okay, because that's all the Lord is dealing with in these end times, man. I've got a quick precept on that. This is um, Daniel twelve and four, and it says, "But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book." Even to the time of the end, That's right. many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Okay, so people are going to go here and there seeking answers, seeking knowledge, and knowledge is going to be increased, man. You know, has it not increased? <laughs> you know, tenfold, yeah. especially in the age of information we live in. You know, absolutely. This is another reason we can see the end manifest. Look at the technology we got now. Yeah. Okay, we can find out anything in this world pretty much at the, cl at the, at the tip of our fingers, right here, man, on this tablet. And that and, and that technology is the Lord's as well. Uh -huh. So for for His elect to find out things, He's given them a channel. But you say, but but even who I don't care how how um, clever you feel you are in secular knowledge. You know, it says only only the wise shall understand. Exactly. And the wise of the Most High, mm -hmm. not the wise of this world. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, the wisdom of this world is foolishness. That's right. To, uh, to the Most High. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's right. But the spiritual wisdom which we seeketh after, that is the wisdom which will lead you to salvation in the in in the time of the end. Okay. Because what, what people need to understand is that we're actually ancient men sitting here. You know, we have been given this from the times past. We're not your, your new age millennials. If, that, if that's uh, even a thing. I'll quickly bring out a precept on that. So this is Daniel uh, 12 and 13. It says, but go thy way till, till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're standing in our lot at the end of days. Yeah. Lord knows who we were in our previous life. Yeah. But this is an example of someone living a previous life. Yeah. Documented here in the book of Daniel. And he's saying, but go thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest, meaning die, you know, be what we'll see as a dead man, you know, you just okay. at rest. And it says, and stand in thy lot at the end of days, which means he's going to be back here again. Because the spirits, the, the, the spirit of the prophets are subject unto the prophets, the Bible says, roughly paraphrasing, which means that if he was a prophet in the past life, you're coming back in the end times and you're going to stand in your lot again and be a prophet again, who you were born to be. Okay? And that takes a rejection of this world, mm. the whole system of things. Mm -hmm. That takes that, that rejection. You know, a, a rejection of this world to be in this thing of ours is what's, what's required. You know what I mean? Once you accept this world, you know, you can't really be a hundred on these scriptures. Because you've accepted another master, you know? Can a servant uh, follow two masters? No, because he will either love the one and hate the other. That's right. So There's no in-betweens, man. Exactly, because really and truly we got a love of this world and the prosperity that it gives its loyal servants. This is the book of uh, James, <clears throat> chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is enmity of the is an is the enemy of the Most High. So like, yeah. It's the enemy of the Most High. Yeah, because why? We looking for another. We looking for a continuing city to come. 
You know, that, that's what we're looking for. You know, we're not looking to establish ourselves as permanent residents in this thing, in this mess, you know? That's right. We're looking for a righteous uh, continuation under the law, statutes, and commandments of our power. Okay. That's what we're doing. This is uh, the book of John, chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yeah, uh, that's powerful, man. Because what's happening now when they when they're opening the clubs, they're saying that you gotta get uh, uh, you gotta get double tapped, you know. <laughs> double tapped. <laughs> yeah, because it leads unto that's death. Good, good you know what I mean? <laughs> so you gotta get double tapped. You know what I mean? So so what is that? That is the love of the world and the things that are in it. So the love of the Father can't be in you. Why? Because because. Uh, the love of the Most High is to live according to spirit, not according to flesh. So this whole worldly construct is like a fleshly construct. Can I go out now? Can I have a few drinks? Give, if in order to do that, I've got to get, I've got to get, uh, mm, got to get juked up. Uh, yeah. So, but why? Because you love the things of the world, you're gonna get. So that's enmity with the Most High. Mm -hmm. You know. And it's defiling your temple, man. The Most High says, if any man defileth his temple, him will the Most High destroy. Because we are the temple, man. Okay. You know? These are serious things. Serious things for, for, for serious times. If there's a brother out there watching who really falls into this thing, get serious. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying go to your workplace now and just be an asshole. <laughs> that, that, that's not what we're saying because uh, you you got to use wisdom in order to navigate through this world. That's it. You know what you I can't mean? Go on your job and say he's a <laughs> damn devil. Yeah. yeah, imagine that because I mean you get some people that are gonna do that shit, and then you don't oh, have a job. Slavery. Yeah, then you don't have a job. They're all gonna be working for me. <laughs> 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 I <assume we> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. If we gotta walk with wisdom in these end times, man. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's the stability of the times we're living in, man. If you're walking around like a fool in these end times, man, I don't care how much you praise in your Bashim Yahushai, man. You could mess up your salvation walking around like a fool. For sure, for you sure. Know? Be very careful. Um, quick precept dealing with the temple, you know, and how we're not to defile our temple. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, and that the, mo and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you. Okay, so we walk around in flesh, a meat suit, if you will. That's our temple, man. And that's the temple that the Most High dwelleth in, because he not dwelleth not in temples made with hands. All right. And it says, uh, if any man defileth the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. For the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple ye are. Okay, so we are the temple of the Most High. We are holy, man. And we are not to tattoo up our body. We're not to eat things that are abominable to our body, that are not made for our body, you know. And we're not to defile our body and pierce our temple with anything foreign yeah. that ain't meant to be in there, man. With demon juice. With stuff <laughs> conjured up in some lab somewhere yeah. in Wuhan, China. Okay. Oh, yeah, mad yeah. sorcerer. And just to touch on that Damn as well, because um, I, I have tattoos on me. But this is before I came into the knowledge of, uh, and the understanding that you ain't supposed to get that. So now that I understand, obviously, that you're not supposed to print any marks in your flesh, get any tattoos, whatever, make any cuttings. I've repented from that. So, you know, most I will and I'm covered for that. That's right. He's not about to go out there now and get a tattoo Jesus on the side of his cheek piece. You know what I mean? See the boy's on my Thinking chest. that you're pleasing <laughs> the up. Lord by doing that. I'm going to for you, God. It was that guy. Jesus Christ. Cool. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> My gosh, man! Christian, that ain't, and that's not the spirit of a sound mind. Yeah. That's the spirit of a bug out, man. You know, 
that's how, that's 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 why these scriptures, man, they let you know the right way because that man ain't got no damn sound mind. Who in this in this with a sound mind puts Jesus Christ on the side of his face in big bold letters <laughs> and as if the Lord is gonna see him on on judgment day. Oh well done, that tattoo man. You repping, you, you repping hard. You repping hard. Yeah, you repping hard. <laughs> Gosh, man, it's, yeah, it's like, you're gonna have to hold that L. <laughs> Yo, it's a car. This your man's. It's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's this, rep- this, this guy represent. This guy repping y'all. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Hey, you're so passionate to it. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a sound mind, man. That's some bugged out mess, man. You know, and this is what we're trying to tell you. It's all spiritual, man. The most high ain't dealing with spirits like that, okay? Now, you lot out there, don't get it twisted. You may hear us real prophets say things like S H I T here and there, or damn, or F U C K, or whatever the hell, man. That's just rude speech, okay? Yeah, I got a precept um, in the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7. And it reads, The angel of Yahweh encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. So when you fear the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, it's when you're keeping the commandments. You know, that's how we fear the Most High. Because if we don't keep his commandments, the judgment that comes with that, you know what I mean? That, that's a fearful thing. Like my brother brought out earlier, uh, knowing the fear of the Lord we sway men because that fear of the Lord is the judgment that that will happen look at the, look what happened to the nation of Israel when when we didn't keep the commandments he put us in slavery and scattered us around the world you know what I mean like you're sat here just willy-nilly living your life living your best life doing all kinds of wickedness there's a heavy judgment coming for you so that's why you know it says here in the scriptures that the angel of Yahweh encampeth around about them that fear him and he and delivereth them. You know, you 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 have a better shot of being delivered, you know. We don't know for certain until we are delivered, but you have a better shot of being delivered than than not keeping the commandments, you know what I mean? I know we're not justified through the commandments because we're in our fleshly meat meat suits, so we're prone to go off from time to time. But the fact that we're rehearsing the righteous acts and we're we're striving to keep the commandments to the best of our ability you know what i mean we we hope for for that deliverance that salvation Mm -hmm. and and if you get if you get a judgment bear it take take what is put upon you cheerfully i shall bear the indignation of of yahweh for i have sinned against him you know what i mean so (laughs) if if you do get it for for your for what you've done take it you know what i mean and then come right and then and then continue in the things of the Most High. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twelve and verse thirteen, and it says, "Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man." Huh. You know, and and in it's the kingdom. Duty. Yeah, and in the kingdom, it ain't only going to be Israelites that are keeping the commandments. It's going to be mankind, everybody living upon this earth under the rulership of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and the 144,000 elect going on down to the rest of Israel. They will have this world under a, a holy vibration according to the law, statutes, and commandments. Under righteous management, ruling the nations with an iron rod, man. I've got another precept to bring out, just off the back of what you were just saying. So this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, uh, Sirach, chapter 2, verse... Uh, we'll start at verse 1. Uh, it says, My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh, prepare thy soul for temptation. Verse 2. Set thy heart aright, and constantly endure so you have to constantly endure in this thing and ain't a, it ain't an easy walk you have to constantly endure and it says make not haste in time of trouble okay so when you're sort of going through it you know your, your job 
you know, your relationship, whatever it is, when you're going through it, uh, make not haste in the time of trouble, constantly endure. Verse 3 it says, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Wow. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. There you go. Just like my brother was just bringing out. There you go. That's yeah. a beautiful scripture right there. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because though that time will come. Yeah. You know? Remember it. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. We're going to have to be like pilgrims upon the earth soon, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> quick precept jumping off the back of that. Also, uh, bouncing off of what you brought out earlier. Um, so this is the book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 9. It says, I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him. And until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Oh, man. So when you're in your sin, who is going to bring you forth out of it? They say he will bring me forth to the light. Mm. You coming out at the hand of the Most High. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So really and truly, if he's bringing you forth to the light, he's actually taking you out of death mm -hmm. because the wages of sin are death. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So this whole thing is about salvation, man. Mm -hmm. We want to be salvation bound, mm -hmm. you know? That's right, man. Yeah. And that's right, we're going to bear the indignation of the Lord, man, because in the sight of this world, it's going to seem like we died, man, but our hope is full of immortality, you know? Yeah, sometimes you go through things, one after the another, so, hit, hit after hit. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know. Even right now, you know, we, me and the brothers were talking, but sometimes you have hit after hit, bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. Can't even catch yourself from, from those reeling uh, those reeling blows, mm. but then you read a scripture like that. Yeah, and they lift you right on up, man. Let you know that that's the that's the that's the reasoning part behind. of the story. You exactly, know? Part yeah. Of the path you meant to take, man. That's you know, right. You meant to just play your part in this movie. And who brings us to these scriptures? Who brings our mind onto them? Because we could read it with a carnal mind and mm. we wouldn't even relate to the scriptures or, or relate anything to our daily life. That's it, man. <clears throat> you know, yeah. I used to be a part of Christianity and uh, mm. thought I was on fire for the Lord for about a year there, a year or two, and then went right back into, you know, living my old life. It's because Christianity had no power, man. And I thought, forever I was going to be seeking answers to questions that I wasn't getting answers for but lo and behold the most high in the end times just in the nick of time brought us into this truth man and now here we are on fire for the Lord again and this time it feels real it feels like a true fire man it feels like we're really a part of something that we have no desire to turn our back on you know, the ways of the world can't sway us like, like like before when we were part of Christianity, man. It had no power compared to what we're dealing with now, man. This is real. This is a, another precept uh, in regards to temptation because, um, you know, I, I think it's important that this be brought out given the fact that we're coming on that uh, the hour of temptation. Okay? Um, and this is the book of First Corinthians chapter 10, verse... 13 and it reads there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but the most high is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will uh, will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it in other words you're going to be tempted but the Lord is never going to put anything on your shoulders that you're not able to bear, you know, that you're not able to, to handle. And any time you are in that temptation, he'll always make a way for you to escape it. You know, there'll always be something that comes up or something that is presented to you to allow you to escape it. You know, and that, that's why we, we trust in the Lord, you know, in these times. So all this 
uh, talk about, you know, you have to be in order to go to a restaurant, to go to the cinema, to do anything. Eventually, it's going to turn into that that uh, prophecy in Revelation 13 and 16, where you have to get the MOTB, if you know what I mean, that, in, uh, that grain of rice, you know, and, and the Lord is going to make a way, like the scriptures that we brought out, where the Lord feeds the, uh, the fowls of the air, the birds, they don't think about how they're going to eat or what, where they're going to live, the Lord provides for them, and the Lord is... is told us that we're, we're even more important than they are you know what I mean so you got to have trust and faith in the Lord in these times that we're coming into that he's going to deliver but if you cower and you That's you right. know you uh, you accept this devil's way of thinking you're, you're basically saying the Lord you don't trust him especially the mark yeah, yeah. you don't trust the Lord so what would you think the Lord's going to do he's going to leave you to it you go cry after your masters that, that you think are so important, you know? That's right. The Lord is, is, is the creator of the heaven and the, and, and the universe. Yeah, because, because Salak, yeah. No, yeah. The, the time of uh, Yahweh, what, what did uh, Satan present to him? All the kingdoms and the glory thereof, of mm -hmm. those kingdoms, you know what I mean? And he's still at that point, mm -hmm. after 40 days of, of, of fasting, at his lowest point, he still rejected um, yeah. the, the kingdoms and all the glory that, that's, up the, that's in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now you give a Jake uh, just a little bit in this time and tell him he's got to kill somebody he loves dearly in order to get him. Look you know what I mean? He's doing it quick. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you can get yourself a cheeseburger if you... If you <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no, you uh, can be a star. Yeah. You know? What the hell? You know. You want to be a star in this? You know, with people who who, who are just psycho, psychopathic uh, leaders. Oh. Eating children and drinking uh, blood. blood and, Baby's uh, blood. You, you know, this is the type of people you're aligning with. Just to get, you know. Just to be comfortable in, in this crumbling society. Uh -huh. you know, uh. The kingdom of heaven is going to be established in the earth. This Whether world you believe it finished. or not, this world is finished, and you yeah. can see it's finished. Look at, just switch on the news, and and just look at the the events that are unfolding. This place is done, and, and that's the times, as we read before, that the Most High will start to <coughs> uh, make visitations upon upon the earth, uh, which right. He is doing. The Lord is doing His thing. Oh, oh praise see how by Shimmy I was that means we we that much closer to getting the hell out of here, man. Out of this nightmare. Yeah, how we're at us up, boy. Yeah, how we're at us up. Oh, oh, Lord. During these times, study, pray, fast like never before, man. We ain't got long left. Can't. Look around you. Nothing else matters but this now. That is it, okay? Most people you know are going to be dead soon. Okay, so what else matters, man? Why invest in the Titanic while it's sinking? Mm. It's not, this world has nothing to offer anymore, man. Yeah. You know, it's high time to wake up out of sleep and make the wise, wisest choice of your life, man. You might have been a uh, F up all your life, but it all comes down to this moment right here, man. Yeah, because remember, the ones who came in the last hour got the same wages as them who was there from the beginning. And that's a good point, too. You know? That's why I always remember that, you know, and that's another reason why the wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. Because just through knowing that, man, you know, that can increase a man's faith also. Yeah. Because, you know, you might be a Johnny come lately, but you will still gain eternal life as much as a man that's been in this truth for 30 years. If you make it, you know. Because it is our Lord's to give. That's right, man. God. But um, either way, you know, we pray this lesson is edifying, man. And uh, hold on, hold fast that which thou hast, man. Okay? Because what you have is a lot more than what a lot of people have in this world, okay? Even if you've only watched a few of our videos, you may know a lot more than 
most people in this world, most scholarly people in this world, man. On that note, man, we'll close it out. Give all honor, praise, and glory to our Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Mahasham, Yahweh Shai, Mahasham, Rakah, Kadash. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.